the Strings Attached Festival here in Margaret River. I'm here with Francis and he's going to tell us about this incredible instrument that mm. he has made on the way over here, right? Well, I finished it on the way over here, mostly just the fret work, just installing the frets and finishing off the levelling and the setup on the another ball plane between Melbourne and Margaret River. Um, now, was that a tonal choice you made? <laughs> or was that simply necessity? Simply necessity, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was fun. Like I enjoy setting up workbenches and tools in random places, and I feel naked without my tools. So it was nice to be able to have an excuse to bring them along. But it was really just that um, life's been really busy uh, for the last twelve months. And I just didn't quite get around to putting the frets on before I left. Right on. Um, so yeah, finished it on the road. Put strings on it yesterday when I arrived at the festival. Um, I was black heart sassafras back and sides, which is endemic to Tasmania and certain pockets in Victoria, but it's got quite a particular microclimate, so it's not very widespread throughout Victoria. It's American walnut neck with um, carbon fibre reinforcement that actually comes all the way through the neck. Um, it's a Lutz spruce soundboard. Uh, which is a naturally occurring hybrid between Carpathian spruce and Sitka spruce. Right. I'm so sure like, most people will be familiar with Sitka. Sitka is the most common. The stock sure. spruce. There's a few areas, I think, between Alaska and Canada where the two forests kind of merge and wow. there's these Lutz spruce trees. And it's got a, you know, a lot of makers say it's an ideal um, strength to weight ratio because it gets the best of both species. Gotcha. Of course, that's debatable and subjective because different makers use it in different ways. But um, it's the first time I've used Lutz Spruce, but I'm really enjoying it. It's got a really strong sound and, and it is stronger than Sitka Spruce, so you can make it a bit thinner. Um, got Blackwood, Australian Blackwood Bridge, which is a bit of an innovation. Normally bridges are made out of rosewood. Yep. Um, more traditionally ebony but blackwood's got a really high Q which is the term used to describe a material's um, acoustic liveness gotcha yeah so that's something I'm just going to continue doing I think because I think it's actually you wouldn't necessarily know way. that it's not rosewood either like, it actually looks pretty similar it looks pretty great yeah it's finished with the lemon oil which makes it slightly darker because um, it soaks in um, multi-scale, obviously, if you can't tell yeah, from the video. Multi-scale fan fret. So the scale lengths are 652 on the base side and 627 millimeters on the treble side. Normally when I do multi-scale, and I almost always do multi-scale these days, I normally extend the base yep. um, to get you know more of a tight, full bass sound, especially for dudes that like doing drop tuning, yep. which I like doing. Yeah, me too. Drop D, drop C, whatever. But also, even for normal tuning, it works quite well. But on this guitar, I actually did the opposite. So the the bass is a little bit longer. I think a standard scale length of 25 inches is about 635 Yeah, something like that. So this is a little bit longer on the bass, but it's more about the shortened treble. The treble is um, down to about 625. Right. So about so, 24 inch, oh, a little I bit don't more. Work in Imperial. Yeah, yeah I no, actually I hate Imperial, <laughs> so I only reference it when I have to. Um, so the idea with that was that um, by shortening the treble strings, you're getting rid of some of the shrill nasal kind of right. tones. Because I guess with an electric guitar, you would use EQ to get rid of that, but you're literally having to bake that in yeah, to well, the to the design. Well, that's that's true, but I guess EQ can only do so much to the sound source. Yes, yeah. you know you can't really you can't polish a turd. Uh, well, I wasn't hey. sure if I'd be using that analogy, but <laughs> I'm allowed to. Apparently. Yeah, of course. It's really about yeah getting rid of some of those nasal things, but also softening the treble so they're a bit sort of slightly more mellow and sweet than um, a normal guitar. And with the fan fret, you know, one of the reasons I do it is because it's like a normal guitar with per perpendicular frets, they're perfectly fine, but um, it's really a compromise between what's an ideal string tension for the bass and what's an ideal string yeah. tension for the treble. There's a reason why when you open up a piano, the bass strings are really long, the treble strings are really short. There's a reason why bass guitars yeah. have longer strings. It's because the bass works better when it's long. A 
Looking at some of your other instruments as well, you mentioned you've actually finished the inside as well. Yeah, so on all my guitars, since my very first acoustic guitar, which I, I even when I was like 17 years old, somehow had the logic. It's like, well, why would you seal the outside and not the inside? It's wood, it's porous, it's going to absorb moisture. Most makers, even a lot of high-end makers, don't finish the insides of their guitars. So I drove this instrument. I thought this one didn't have strings on all my other instruments that are down on the floor all the way from Melbourne to Margaret River, which is 3,600 kilometres or something. And how many climatic zones do you drive Many different well? climatic zones, and the guitars were still in tune when I arrived. That's amazing. Yeah. My acoustic guitar doesn't stay in tune for more than, like, 12 minutes, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like every song at a gig. Yeah. You're going and you're tuning. Yeah. And well, I, th I think a lot of that I attribute to the woods just being more stable because yep. they're finished on the inside but there's probably other reasons why they stay in tune as well because of the way that I lock the the neck into the body and you know I'll cut in some footage as well of some of the neck heels with your like sound hole cutaway mm. guitar and yeah it's well, just ultimate guitar porn but it's really <laughs> functional as well which is nice yeah well that's it and that's what i aim to do i want to make instruments that play beautifully and feel beautiful and you develop a relationship to them they've got a relationship to the human body in such a intrinsic way i mean that's what they're built for you know but i really pay attention to that i want them to feel beautiful as well yeah, yeah. Sound beautiful um and work beautifully so you know i want i want to respect these beautiful materials that mother nature is providing us with you know I can't, you, I can't use stuff like this and not respect it and really make it into something that's a work of art and um, yeah. Having an actual philosophy behind your building as well rather than just like yeah. to make a thing mm. and sell it and you know, it's, it's more yeah. than just commerce. That's right, I'm, I really don't do this for the money. My instruments are quite expensive, like definitely this one in particular on the higher end of what a guitar can cost but um, you know I'm not making much money when I'm doing this um, in terms of actual man hours like if you worked out what you're paying yourself per hour I have worked that out but I tend to forget those numbers yeah. because they hurt too much yeah but it's like you're not yeah. would you be making minimum wage probably so not often less often less yeah. so there you go yeah. but, practice you know, real that's, hard that's why it's one of the reasons why I, um, I do this part-time not full-time yeah. yeah I'm a craftsperson full-time I do all sorts of custom work for architects and designers and sculptors and myself and um, but you know that's my bread and butter and then by night I turn into a guitar maker when yeah yeah it comes out and <laughs> yeah, man and they look amazing but we were talking before and you had like one of the best guitar life hacks I've ever heard about uh, so that? the humidifier Ah. you were talking about so yeah. we were talking about before how you finish the inside of your guitars obviously to control you were saying it's the humidity not necessarily it's temperature not, it's not necessarily heat a lot of people think that heat's the killer and a lot of times it is because heat causes evaporation but it's actually the humidity so and going from one extreme to the other I was saying for instance in Alaska there's very low humidity because all the moisture freezes all the moisture from the air. But As then opposed you can to have Northern places, Australia. Yeah, like Cairns, where it's 41 degrees and 98% humidity. So, um, yeah. But the so old if you world don't trick, have a, if you don't have a humidifier <laughs> handy. If you don't have a humidifier, cut a potato in half and put it in your case or pop it in the sound hole while you're on the road. And Probably that, take it out before the gig. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's the best thing I'm going to hear all week. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining us. And my pleasure. Uh, where can people me. find you? Um, FrancisJerome.com is my webpage. Um, it's pretty much where all my stuff is. I don't really do Facebook or Instagram. I do have an Instagram account, but I'm yet to actually make it a thing. Yep. So yep. You, can, you can find me on Instagram, Francis Jerome. Um, there's no content there yet, <laughs> but if you keep an eye on it, Content will happen one day soon. Um, but yeah, francisdrum.com, you can see all my work. This guitar's not up there yet, but it will be soon. And um, yeah, all my contact details are there. So it's really the way to go. I'm going to embarrass myself and play this thing now. So. Sure, man. Do you want me to tune it back up to standard? Oh, that's fine.
now, but it's like I'm like feeling it through my chest, yeah. which is people um, often have that experience when they play my guitars, and a lot of that's to do with the solid laminating lining on the inside. So the perimeter of the guitar is like a drum rim, essentially. Yeah, I've like Whereas, not experienced this before. It's also just because I work really hard to get the back to sympathetically resonate with the face, right. and that's what gives it a nice three-dimensional sound. Also, I forgot to mention the fingerboard is um, a rare desert hardwood from somewhere out this way. I think probably a bit more central. Is it west. Molga? No, it's, it's not Molga. It's Obesa, actually the Casalina really? family. Yeah. Wow. Um, and it, I compared it to some Molga that I've got before it went on the guitar. I just did some tap listening, and the tone of this Obesa is better than anything I've ever used for fretboards before. It's really nicely weighted too, man. Mm, well, the next probably about a third hollow because of the carbon fiber tube that's in there. So now I'm lost. No. Like I said, I'm embarrassing myself. But... Right. I'm still deciding with a bit of carving my fret markers like the other guitars. Yeah, I'm not sure. yeah. What do you reckon? I reckon that's super cool and super unique. Um, this because is that wasn't... for a is that like a feel kind of it's thing? So, so you, you can, can feel it, but you also so you can see it. But I hate yeah. I hate the normal dots. It's just so academic and boring. So Academic. My that's major was in it. sculpture, so oh, there you that's go. why I, I made three dimensional fret markers. Well, there you go. I think this is easily the coolest guitar I'm going to see all weekend. And uh, Francis Jerome, francisjerome.com. Find him there. I'll see you guys next time.